accurately identifying people in photos has, up until now, been a very human process. Even though social media sites have been suggesting photo tags since 2010, their success has been a little bit hit and miss, especially where drunk selfies are concerned. But things are starting to step up, and technology developed by Facebook's AI lab can now recognise faces with 97.35% accuracy which is actually 0.28% less accurate than a human. Which is surprising, because computers are normally more accurate than us. So why are us humans still better than computers at this? Well, the human ability to identify people and things by sight is actually quite a unique form of identification. Most other animals get to know and recognise each other by smell. Yeah, that's right, your dog isn't necessarily a deviant. All that sniffing is the equivalent of you peering round a dark nightclub to try to make out your friends. Facial recognition is something we've evolved to do. In fact, we have a whole area of our brain dedicated to it, the fusiform face area, to be precise. It's linked to other skills too. Chess players who learn from a young age often use this area of the brain when analysing different configurations of pieces on a board. Essentially, the human brain is really very well primed to recognise recurring patterns, and faces are just another pattern. Initial attempts at AI identification try to mimic this human method. The computer would divide the face into visible landmarks called nodal points, which include things like the depth of the eye sockets, the distance between each eye, and the width of your nose. And the differences between these areas were then used to create a unique code a person's own face print. But there was a problem. To get a correct match, photos had to be almost like for like in their composition. And you rarely get the same view of your face in two photos. Our faces are in constant flux. They're just not static like fingerprints. OK, there are four main issues you face when developing facial recognition. They're known as the API problem. Aging, pose, illumination, emotions. But never fear, now there is a 3D recognition system called, and no laughing in the back, Deep Face. It's able to take a 2D photo of a person and create a 3D model of the face. Now this allows the face to be rotated so that pictures taken from different angles or poses can be compared. And that takes care of the P of API, pose. The A, Aging is no longer a problem either. The face print system has been refined and is now created from areas of the face that have rigid tissue and bone, such as the curves of the eye socket or the nose or the chin. Things that apparently don't alter much as we age. But the main reason for the heightened accuracy of deep face is down to a computer teaching technique called deep learning, which uses algorithms to try and work out when it's on the right track. Each time it correctly or incorrectly matches two faces, it remembers the steps it took, creating a roadmap. And the more times it repeats the process, the more connections that appear on its map and the more accurate it becomes at the task. The idea is for the computer to build a network of connections, like our neural network of interconnected neurons. Facebook's neural network has a staggering 20 million connections, a number that will just keep increasing with every photo that is uploaded and tagged. The larger the data set, the better the computer can become. Facebook's benefit is that the data needed to train the computers to recognise faces is already on the platform in the form of a library of 4.4 million labelled faces taken from the profiles of just 4,030 Facebook users. Imagine how good it could be if it tapped into more. But is this the best use of intelligent software? Surely facial recognition could be used for good for, say, security tracking. Well, back in classic 1985 Bond, a view to a kill. As I'm sure you remember, Christopher Walken was using a computer program to identify what looks like an 8-bit version of Bond. That was sci-fi, of course, but in fact, most of the original facial recognition systems were based on the same sort of 2D system. The problem is, as CCTV images tend to be dark or grainy, it was difficult to identify people in that way. However, things are changing. This year, 
Download Festival became the first outdoor event in the UK to scan the crowds for known troublemakers. Cameras were placed strategically around the festival, monitoring the 90,000 strong crowd. Shopkeepers are using similar software too to create their own database of known crooks and alert them when shoplifters enter the store. Then there's things like fraud. MasterCard is actually looking to see if taking a selfie could be a viable way to authenticate a credit card purchase. And of course, what technological breakthrough would be complete without marketing people getting their hands all over it? Mondelez International Supermarket in the US is already trialing smart shelves. Cameras in the aisles identify your age and gender, then use that info to interact with you, offering you what it thinks are suitable deals. Now I imagine if the software has had the Facebook training, it could recognise a hangover when it saw one and give you a voucher for paracetamol and bacon. There's another way that this tech could be useful too. People who suffer from face blindness or prosopagnosia would greatly benefit from facial recognition technology. And for those of us who forget names, there's also an app called Name Tag, sorry, that takes a snap of a person and finds their online profile for you. If you combine that with something like Google Glass, RIP, then you'd never need to look socially awkward again. Well, not because you've forgotten a name, anyway. There's an elephant in the room with all this. Privacy. In fact, Japan's National Institute of Informatics Technology has created privacy glasses, which have special lenses to absorb light in order to try and mask the wearer's features from facial recognition software. But that technology might already be redundant. Something called Faceit Argus can identify you using your skin. The technique is known as surface texture analysis and it works like facial recognition but it actually creates a skin print instead and it is so accurate it can distinguish between identical twins which face print readers really struggle to do. What do you do if you've already been processed and uploaded to a database? Well, I Look Like You is a website that allows you to find people who, clues in the name, look like you. Here's my idea. Go track down your doppelganger, then you have plausible deniability next time an embarrassing drunk photo gets uploaded. Genius. You're welcome.